And CBN's George Thomas is in Kyiv, joins us now. So, George, you are inside a kitchen in Kyiv that's doing some incredible humanitarian work. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is the YWAM Kyiv Center. It's called Youth with a Mission, uh, Ephraim. It's a global Christian organization. I'm in the kitchen, and this is today and they're making food every day since about day three of the war they've been cooking hundreds of meals uh, lydia what is on the menu for today and how many people are you feeding today okay okay so they're cooking chicken they're cooking pasta and they're cooking burgers and they're cooking for about 300 people. And today we've got two guys here, Nick and Max. They're under the age of 18. Uh, Max is eight, uh, he's 17 years old and he wants to desperately go and join the front lines. But today he says because he's underage, he's, he's uh, helping his country by helping these ladies cook here in the kitchen. So Ephraim, just a sense of, of the kind of unity that you see today happening to, uh, in the country. Everybody rallying to help their countrymen. Imagine. The U.S. is sending $800 million in new military assistance to Ukraine. What kind of weapons are we sending them, and how could this affect the Ukrainian battlefield? Yeah, you know, Ephraim, when I was looking at the list of, uh, of uh, military equipment that we are sending uh, the, uh, the Ukrainians, the thing that stuck out to me, a couple of things. One, uh, you have the... Um, uh, what's, what's called the Stinger missiles. In fact, these were huge from during the Soviet uh, Russian invasion. In essence, the Stinger missiles is what won the war uh, for these uh, for the for the Afghans against the Soviets. The other thing is these javelins. These are shoulder-mounted javelins that can, in essence, you know, you can put it on your shoulder and launch it against a tank or a helicopter, a huge game changer, as well as we're sending the Ukrainians drone ca uh, capability and satellite capability. In essence, they have the air uh, covered. They're able to t uh, track the movement of troops as well as tanks. It's going to be huge for them. And then we're sending them millions of, of uh, ammunition, weapons, helmets, uh, flak jackets, uh, and other equipment that's going to be uh, really essential for the Ukrainians as they continue uh, to wage the counteroffensive against the Russians. Mm. How is uh, Russia reacting to the significant uptick in U.S. military assistance? Yeah, uh, Russia's uh, foreign minister Lavrov said that uh, that if these uh, weapons continue to flow into Ukraine, they are legitimate targets, in essence, that they're threatening uh, to, to cut the supply line, at least the, the weapons supply line. So again, a, a warning from, from, from Moscow. Uh, real quick, there's reporting that Putin is conducting a purge of his top military generals. What's going on there? Yeah, the reporting is that several high-ranking uh, generals in the military have been uh, placed under house arrest. Uh, 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 an element of the uh, FSB, the Internal Security Agency, they, he has been put under house arrest. This comes as well as, you know, on top of the fact that about nine high-ranking military uh, folks here on the ground in Ukraine have been taken off the battlefield. In essence, they have been killed. Uh, the sense is that the generals have been reporting to Putin, that, you know, this would be a cakewalk, that within 24, 48 hours, that they would capture Kiev, clearly three weeks into the uh, invasion. That has not happened. So he's turning uh, his wrath uh, against his own generals, putting them under house arrest, and uh, maybe coming up with a new battle plan. We'll have to see. Indeed. Our CBN senior international correspondent George Thomas reporting for us from Kiev. Thank you so much, George.